My name is Tommy Ahonen. I'm the, the most published author of mobile and um, 12 books. I'm, I'm referenced in 120 books by, by my peers. And I like to look where the money is, how the people make money and success in mobile. So I'm not at all interested in how many billion downloads you get of free apps. I'm interested in who makes money in this. But I'm not a greedy money guy. I also define very broadly the benefit. If you're in education, you don't care about stealing money from your kids. You want to educate the kids, do better in their math score. If you are in, in, in healthcare, you don't want to take money from your patients. You want to heal them, make them better, right? In politics, you don't care about getting money from, well, yeah, politicians also want to get money from, from their electorate, but particularly they want to get votes. So however you measure the success in your industry, mobile can help you. And in that sense, I want to talk about uh, mobile. So, so Let's take a look at, at the future of digital, and I want to start with S-curves. Just for, for you struggling with the, with the complex issue of what we have today, we have a lot of power that we get out of S-curves. So you know the standard S-curve, you know, looks something like this. And if we plot, you notice on the bottom I don't have months or weeks or days or years or decades, I just put period. So that if you notice that in some kind of industry there is an S-curve happening, and then you notice that, okay, we are now at this point, let's say period five, and we're hitting about 10%. And you notice then that from the launch, the commercial mass market launch of that service, it's been five years. You know the period is roughly one year to move up on that curve. It comes very powerful information. Or if you know that that period was two years, then you just plug in two years into this and you can start to map out what the future will look like. Why is this relevant? This industry is full of analysis which goes wrong. Because look at now this. If you take a typical mobile news service that's launched and starting to look like this, and then you ask, you know, Gartner and IDC and, and, and Ovum and, and, and Forrester to give us, you know, future predictions, they look like this. And very reasonable expectation. And then when we start to measure what happens, you guys all remember what happened with SMS, for example. Whoops, whoops. Is that, that obviously we get the, the curve and constantly at every uh, penetration rate, constantly at any point, 3G migration, constantly at any point, the projection is below what actually happened. Consumer smartphones, exactly the same thing. The predictors are behind. So, they're, they're, it's your most important friend in now this difficult time of great complex change in the telecoms industry overall, here in New Zealand, but also globally. The, um, there are a couple of things I want to very specifically mention. S-curve applies, it applies well in telecoms for consumer mass market propositions. If something is successful in a business niche, it doesn't automatically mean you will get the S-curve hitting 100% of consumers. If something is successful, oh, and the other thing, uh, the, the, the bottom bullet point, it should be measured based on viable commercial business, not simply downloads, not simply people who register for a free service. Otherwise, we've got something like happened with the dot-com bubble a decade ago. So that we, I'm, I'm very much concerned that the application, smartphone application space is now near a bubble. That it, it's just hype, 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 but there's no real economic uh, uh, power behind it. But in mobile, there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of areas where we find commercially viable business, and once when the commercially viable business is real, we can plot the S-curve. So, if we look now, for example, SMS. Take SMS, which launched in 19, uh, 1993 in Finland commercially. Uh, GSM started in 1991 in Finland. Um, this is roughly the global penetration of SMS users out of all telecoms, uh, all mobile phone subscribers on the planet. Today, you know this, New Zealand's one of the, the st strong users of SMS, has been for a long time. Today, more people on the planet use their mobile phone for text messaging than for voice calls. We've already reached that transition point where more people will use the phone for text messaging than voice calls. And it will only keep on shifting more. Doesn't mean that the voice call dies, it's just that it becomes less and less relevant for us in our communications. Now, what can we do with this? If you read the, the uh, summary of, of my presentation, I, I mentioned smarty pants. We're at this stage now. 
There are baby pants that will send you SMS alerts when there's something happening in, in the baby, whether it needs to go to the toilet or perhaps there are some health issues and, and so forth. So, so really, smarty pants, we are at this level of, of now in adding the SMS integration. You can pay your taxes via SMS in Norway. You can sign a contract legally binding in Turkey via SMS, etc. So I mean that this is really the kind of, of things that we are now doing in this space. So we used to be a telephone business. It is no longer a voice call business. Our, our service has gone from the services to the ear to services to the eye, as my mentor uh, uh, Matti Makkonen used to say, the inventor of SMS. So this is, this is our modern use of our phone. It's mostly data services. Occasionally we'll make calls, but most of our services are, are data-related services. You know this old stuff. So, but the power of the SMS curve, nothing lasts forever. So now if we look at the latest me measures we have in terms of mobile phone messaging revenue migration. Ovum just calculated for us, uh, when was it, uh, February. Um, so so uh, today, total value of social media cannibalized from mobile messaging is 14.14, 14 billion dollars. Uh, when you take that as, as out of total uh, uh, SMS value of 126 uh, billion, uh, it means that 10%, almost 11% of, no, uh, yeah, 10% of the total messaging traffic has already been cannibalized because you need to add them together. So it would have been 140 billion uh, adding these two. So almost exactly 10% of, of total person-to-person -person messaging revenues has already migrated to Twitter, to, to BlackBerry Messenger, to, to iMessage, to, to uh, WhatsApp, to, to uh, what's South Africa, MX, what is it, MX, what's South Africa, the ser messaging service? MX it or something. Sorry? Mix it, right, thank you. So you, I knew you, you guys know. So anyway, um, that, that, and the total traffic is much more migrated, if this is revenue. The traffic has gone much, much more. Traffic will be 25% of total traffic is already gone from SMS to, to the, the uh, more efficient messaging medium. So, social media is here today. And, and we can now plot roughly when can we expect it will reach uh, 50%. If we find the consumer mass market start point as period one, then we can roughly plot when will it kill your revenues and profits from SMS. So, so, I count period one to be when BlackBerry Messenger switched from an enterprise solution to a consumer proposition, which is roughly 2006. Actually happened earlier, but to keep it simple, so that means the period here is roughly one year. If in 2011, 10% of total SMS revenue has already migrated away from SMS, total person-to-person uh, -person, uh, messaging, mobile messaging has revenue. Then, that was 2011, then we get 50% will be in, sorry, 50, I, I pre prepared these slides on the plane. So, so, period seven, so we are three years, no, I'm sorry, we're here, two years from now, 2013, end of 2013, we should be at half point in terms of revenues. If you're working for a telco operator, Globally, SMS delivers half of total, total profit of the operator. You guys need to really prepare now for what comes next. Partly you want to extend this life as much as you can. There are many things we can do to extend the revenue streams over there. Partly you want to try to keep some of the not extremely addicted messaging users from migrating to the other messaging platforms, give them good reasons to remain with you and give you business longer with that. But obviously the gravy train that has been SMS that I love and on Twitter I do my SMS dance almost every week, that time is coming to an end. It hasn't, the end hasn't started yet. SMS will still continue to grow. It still grew users, it grew traffic, and it grew revenues during 2011. So SMS has not peaked yet, but the peak is now starting to be visible on the horizon. So just be careful. We need to now start to consider what can we do beyond that. So, we are, uh, how about smartphones? Oops, sorry. Exactly the same pattern. Smartphones, we are now uh, roughly here. On smartphones, we can count because, again, I'm not counting smartphones for enterprise, which would be the, the first Nokia communicator in 1997. I'm counting smartphones for consumers, which started with the failing N-Gage gaming platform that Nokia launched in 2004. Now we count the period 
It's not a year, it's not two years, it's 18 months, one eight, 18 months. And we are at this point now, uh, at the end of last year, we hit 30% in Q4, 30% of all new phones sold were smartphones on the planet. So we are today at about 33%, 32%, 34% when Q1 numbers are going to be repeated, uh, uh, reported in just a few weeks. So, so that's exactly where we are at right now. So again, we can calculate how soon we are going to hit 50% of all new phones sold on the planet being smartphones. New Zealand's way ahead. I know you guys have more, uh, much, much higher smartphone penetration. But when we're looking at global trends, they apply here also only that you are further ahead on it. So, so um, what can we... Uh, I'm sorry, did I have another slide on this one? Sorry, L let me go back to... Let me just go back to here. So, um, uh, if, if smartphones are today... Sorry, I, I, I should have drawn one more slide for you. Uh, so, so um, if smartphones are today at about this point for 30%, then we will get hit 50% uh, spring of next year. Spring, summer, next year, half of all phones sold will be smartphones. And you can take it to the bank. It's plus minus one quarter. So if I say second quarter uh, 2013, half of the, the world's f uh, smart, uh, mobile phones sold will be smartphones. Um, and you'll see the other forecasters will shorten their forecast all the time, coming closer to this. We just had uh, one of them uh, re removed. They had promised that half of all phones sold in year 2015 will be smartphones. They moved it up to 2014 already. So they're, they're moving them, them closer and closer when they notice that they're underguessing the, the forecast. Okay. So what, what are we doing with them? So if we know that for all mobile phones, the primary use of, of a mobile phone is, is, is uh, messaging, and second use is voice calls. For smartphone users, obviously, we are now getting other kind of uses. So uh, apps have already uh, jumped ahead of voice calls for smartphone users. We will get more and more newer, clever, different things that we can do with our phones. So, um, but also, what happens to the smartphone? I calculated this uh, provocatively back in 2010. If you apply Moore's law religiously, for one decade. If you ignore all other things in the economy, things like shipping costs and, and marketing costs and other things, but just take the pure cost of whatever is your favorite phone, that, that if you have the, uh, the, the Nokia E7 or you have the Samsung Galaxy Beam or, or you have whatever is your favorite pho you know, phone, the iPhone 4S or, or, or uh, you know, Blackberry Bold or whatever it is, take the top phone that exists today I'm sorry, that existed in 2010. And then, every 18 months, its price should, should be cut in half. The hardware cost to manufacture that product profitably should be cut in half, says Moore's law. Some things do not follow that law. Battery life does not follow that law. You know, those of you who work in, in uh, uh, telecom, uh, um, the technical side of, of uh, mobile operators know that spectrum efficiency doesn't keep up with Moore's law. But on the hardware, smartphone. If you took that same iPhone, which was 2010, was the iPhone 4 or the 3GS, um, take the specifications of that phone, we, the industry, can, using Moore's law, can create the exact same device for about 10 US dollars, including its sales, same sales profit margin by the end of this decade. Now, that's not what the future of the phone looks like. Obviously, the phones will get much more ability, wonderful technical things, you know. They try to make us see through walls and read our minds and teleport us and time travel and, you know, all the cool, funky, you know, science fiction stuff. But, but it will, the phones will keep on getting better and the handset makers have every inter interest not to bring the price down to a $1 phone. So, so they will try to boost it. But from a hardware point of view, there is no reason to think that all of Africans, Africa's mobile phones will not at some point become smartphones, or all of the, the basic phones in India or Indonesia or Brazil or uh, Argentina, they cannot become smartphones. They all will. At some point, it just becomes pointless to try to sell non-smart mobile phones. So, then let's talk about size. This, luckily, is a, a, a good audience. I don't need to uh, tell you about the size stuff. You know this already. Uh, so, so mobile is the most widely spread technology that ever existed on the planet. More people have mobile phone accounts than have toothbrushes. And, and all of us who have a, a, a job, uh, uh, adults, will have two phones. 
and, and uh, older teenagers start to have two phones too. So, so, but it gets more interesting when we look at how fast is mobile. And here I, I'm going to tell you a little trick, about little, little back, background story about this, this uh, slide. I'm showing this around the world about a New Zealand statistic from New Zealand Herald, New Zealand Herald uh, from 2010. It measured, it reported that the average uh, SMS is read in four minutes and the average email is read in 48 hours. I have since then found an even better statistic for myself. I found someone who said that SMS is now read in three minutes. But I like this slide for a reason I'll just show in a moment. So anyway, when you do the mathematics and you compare the speed of delivery of a message on SMS to speed of delivery via email, throughput is 720 times faster. To understand how intense is 720 times faster, if you left London, uh, sorry, Liverpool in 1840, before they had steamships, and crossed the Atlantic to New York, it would take you three weeks to arrive in New York, provided you had a good captain who didn't get lost and you weren't, hit, didn't hit an iceberg and, and you know, didn't land in, in Cuba or, or Canada. If you took the Concorde when it flew, and flew from London Heathrow to JFK, three hours and 20 minutes, is not 720 times faster. That is only 360 times faster. This is still twice as fast than going from a sail ship to the Concorde, <laughs> or four times faster than going sail ship to what does Qantas fly, uh, I mean, uh, New Zealand fly, uh, you know, the Boeing 747s and Airbuses and so forth. So, so um, 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 720 times faster. This is why I keep showing this old slide, because then we have this from Britain, the Internet Advertising Bureau, IAB, measured British mobile commerce users and compared them to e-commerce users. If you come to Amazon looking for Tommy's book, it takes a typical user one month from the first visit to the e-business site to making an actual purchase. And IAB measured in Britain on mobile commerce, that difference is one hour. That, do the math, it's not 690 times faster. It's not 732 times faster. It is exactly 720 times faster. Spooky statistic. Really, really, really spooky. But from my point of view to making an argument, now that I found someone with newer statistics than the New, York, New Zealand statistics saying that SMS is ready in three minutes, it spoils my fun of this, this, this story. So that's why I keep peddling the old New Zealand uh, information, even though I have a newer one. But just so you guys know, I like the story, and it helps me keep the 720 math up there and, and really impress some people who are not very familiar with this industry. doesn't matter what the exact percentage is how much faster. It is significantly faster. Mobile reaches a significantly larger, larger audience than television, radio, print, internet, anything else we can imagine. And mobile is by far the fastest medium ever existed on the planet. How addicted are we is the dramatic part. This is really the amazing part. If you are a chain smoker, if you smoke a pack a day, two packs a day, three packs a day, if you smoke three packs a day, you go into your pocket 60 times a day. The average person on the planet looks at their mobile phone 150 times per day. The average person. During my presentation, you have to go into your pocket five times. You cannot avoid that phone. You have to see what's going on. The average person for their waking hours looks at their mobile phone every six and a half minutes of every waking hour, Monday through Sunday, even at church. We look at it everywhere. So, what is the customer like? If we look at the customer of, of mobile, especially of those of you who are considering the future, looking a little bit more five, ten years into the future, a good window into that is to understand the mindset of young people today. So that's why I like to say the customer of tomorrow is the youth of today. A couple of uh, observations. Britain measured that they found that four-year-olds, one in ten, four-year-olds has a mobile phone. And one in ten, ten-year-olds has an iPhone. Don't think the limit is seven years. It will go down, down, down. Don't think that they will only have hand-me-down phones. In Japan, they sell new phones for six-year-olds, which are so childlike that the nine-year-olds refuse to take them. They're designed for 
the six to eight year old only, you know, with nice little butterflies and nice little, you know, pink, you know, elephants and things like that. That little bit older children, oh, that's too childish for me. <laughs> so this industry is changing. And then they call it the Facebook generation, to which I say bullshit. Absolutely, absolutely not true. Kids love Facebook. This is from America, US study, 2010. Cha-Cha measured. Out of their favorite way, first of all, their favorite device, when, when asked to, to choose, 61% take mobile, 18, 1, 8, pick the computer, 11% pick the TV, 11% pick radio. But look at SMS versus Facebook. When asked to communicate, their favorite way to communicate, Americans, only 9% picked Facebook. 68% of American teenagers picked SMS. Seven times more. Only 3% picked those instant messaging services that we so much love and fear. SMS is 20 times bigger, by preference. Only 0.3% said email. Email is totally dead. It only works for us old people, the digital immigrants. But for the digital natives, they only use email to com communicate with older people, with their teachers or with their bosses. Amongst themselves, they use only much more efficient ways to, to, to communicate. And we do it everywhere. Yes, we send text messages from the toilet. We take our mobile phone to the bathroom because we don't want to admit that you know, we still need to have the BlackBerry addiction and we still need to check some more messages and so forth. Or we take it there so that we can silent, secretly have, carry on that somewhat clandestine communication that we want to have and so forth. But it's funny, I mean, yes. 31% have te sent text messages while on a date. Uh, uh, yeah, 17% sent text messages from church. There, 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 is a, there is an angel holding a mobile phone in Holland, no, Belgium, Holland. Uh, uh, so, so perhaps God also is connected now to the mobile network, I don't know. But how heavy is it? Um, uh, Pew count, counted, uh, so, so um, uh, the average person, average American teenager sends over 100 text messages a day. When you count out total characters in Leo Tolstoy's masterpiece, horrible long book, War and Peace, three million and so forth characters. The average teenager texts the equivalent of war and peace every seven months. If, if, you, if you are a teacher and you could have your kids send in their homework just via text message, they would, they'd love it. You know, it, it will never, the volume will never be a problem. They can send messages blind, they can send messages without looking at their phones and so forth. And of course, we all do this, but the numbers are quite big. 80% of, of British youth use their phone during television broadcasts to socialize with their friends. They are, they are consuming two media at the same time. So they're talking about you know, uh, the, the TV show you know, while they are, are, are watching it and, and chatting with, with their friends. Then there's that industry of trying to create the perfect phone. Trying to create one wonder machine, the Uber phone, that could be everything for everyone, which is a complete useless, pointless task anyway, but now we have the evidence from the youth. They don't even want it. As older people hold on to a fantasy that perhaps one day, if I could just combine these features from the iPhone with this thing from the Samsung and this old thing from the Nokia and create the perfect phone, nah, nah. Youth think that it's okay to have two pho phones. In fact, it's cool to have two phones. So this is an older statistic from, from Britain from 2007, I'm sorry, 2006. Uh, office Angels interviewed British teenagers, and they thought, the majority of them, I'm sorry, almost half of them, uh, thought that, that anyone is cool, anyone cool needs two phones. If you can put two phones on the table when you're at, at you know, uh, meeting up with your friends at Pizza Hut, you're a really important person. Because you had your private phone, and now you have a phone from work as well. It doesn't really matter, you know, what they are exactly, but if you've got two phones, you're an important person. And so forth. So, I mean, the mindset is changing in this way. That's why I have a BlackBerry and iPhone and so forth. Then you start to optimize. This one has a good camera. This one has a good keyboard or whatever. Things like that. And um, more completely stunning things that go against adult uh, thinking. Like willing to engage with mobile advertising. Alcatel Lucent measured uh, their, their youth panel and they asked the question, how many uh, y young people are willing to accept ads daily? When you say two ads per day from favored brands, 66%, two-thirds of, of uh, modern youth around the world say, yeah, that's cool. I'll take two ads from my favorite brands. These are my favorite brands, not the others. 
But if it's Adidas and if it's Levi's and if it is Pepsi and it's Red Bull, whatever you know, my favorite brands are, sure, they can talk to me. Twice a day, I'll be happy to take their ads. Whereas all of us will say, oh, please, no more ads. You know, the last thing I want is more ads. So, so the, the young people have a different attitude to this technology, which gets this weird. Um, Retrovo measured, measured in Britain, one in ten British teenagers thinks it's okay to send text messages while having sex. I'm from Finland, I'm a single guy, and yeah, I think I've, I've got pretty, you know, pretty, pretty wild sense of what I think is acceptable and normal in a relationship, but my next girlfriend, when she hugs me and puts her hand behind the pillow, I hope she doesn't have a phone there. I don't want her sending updates to her girlfriends of how Mr. Author is doing in bed. So, so yeah, that, this is... But anyway, so, so again, I mean, this is the Facebook generation. We're very happy to give their whole sex life, you know, online and so forth, so, so why not? Please don't misunderstand me. I love mobile. I'm mobile, 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 absolutely everywhere, and, and pushing it, it to every direction. The future is not only mobile, and I don't think mobile will kill other, the other media and the other platforms. Young people say that they are, they are a multi-platform world. They will optimize. They will always seek. So it, it doesn't mean the end of the computer. doesn't mean the end of the fixed internet. doesn't mean the end of play, uh, PlayStation and Xbox. All of the other digital platforms will continue to live. Please don't misunderstand me. I will not talk more about the other platforms, but I do believe they all have plenty of growth left. Tommy didn't come here and say mobile will kill the other uh, media or the other platforms. But let's talk about grand convergence. Where is the opportunity? All of you know when you think about convergence, there are standard theories saying, oh yes, telecoms will merge with media, will merge with the, India, with the internet, it'll be a nice, messy place where everyone competes with everyone. Not even nearly close. I've been studying this and now I'm up to 13 industries, or is it 14 industries now, um, which, which all will merge into, inside this circle. Is it 14 now? I'm sorry, more than 14, whatever. So um, um, they will all come, there's a better picture coming if you want to take. So, so you, you want to take the better, this is the, only the introduction picture. So every one of these industries, I believe, will end inside this circle. Most of their business will be found inside this circle. None of them started inside this circle to begin with. So um, notice this is not every business. So, for example, air travel is not here. For example, retail is not here. If I'm in a hotel, I cannot live in a mobile phone hotel. I have to have a physical room. I have to have a physical bed, etc. So, so, you know, mining will not go to mobile. Farming will not go to mobile. Forestry management will not go to mobile. Even though every one of those industries can take advantage of mobile. I am looking at industries which I believe will all completely... Oh, and airlines? Yeah, I forgot, again, my order of slides. Airlines, as an example. Uh, the Airline Traveler World Survey from 2011 found that 33%, uh, one in three of world's airline travelers have already used mobile check-in, and 17%, so that's what one in six of, uh, passengers have already used a mobile boarding pass. So obviously airlines can do a lot you know, in this space, even though I don't count them into this circle. So the industries that I have in this circle will all end in it. If you are from the fixed telecoms business, you remember there was a time we had debates and arguments 10 years ago whether mobile can ever really take the majority of the telecoms business. Today, four out of every five telephones that rings on the planet is a mobile phone, not a fixed line phone. So obviously it happened. So, then I, every one of these arrows is the same length. The thickness, the width of the arrow tells you how big the industry is. So for example, banking is a $1 trillion industry. Insurance is a $1 trillion industry, 1,000 billion. Telecoms is a $1 trillion industry. Advertising is a half a $1 trillion industry. Broadcast is about one third of a $1 trillion industry. Whereas for example, music and gaming are only $30 billion, $50 billion industries. The thickness of the arrow tells you how big the industry is. The length of the arrow is always the same. Now, I have used my judgment to move these arrows into the circle to show you how far they have already migrated into the circle. So this is what the, this, if you want to take a picture, this is the picture you want to take. So, so this is the, 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 how far the industry has come. So telecoms, for example, four out of every five phones on the planet is now a mobile phone account. 
So that's why about 80% of that tele telecoms arrow on the right has already moved into this circle. And you see in some areas like uh, music, almost half, social media, about half, wristwatches, more than half has moved into the circle, but some of these businesses have barely moved. Like insurance is only starting to come in, print media is doing very little bit, just starting to come in here, broadcast has moved further into the circle, and so forth. Okay, so this gives you a little bit of a guide, my best judgment, of what the situation was like at the end of 2011, the start of 2012. The interesting part, perhaps, is the part in the bottom left corner. The total value for this competition, this is the grand prize. Grand Prix racing meets Wimbledon, tennis meets the Olympics, meets uh, the rugby tournament, meets every Olympics, meets absolutely every kind of sports that ever existed, meets uh, the Oscars, meets the Tonys, meets the Grammys, meets every kind of, you know, entertainment competition ever existed, plus let's throw in whatever the contest we have, the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, every contest ever added together, this is a bigger race. This is the ultimate race for the planet. The value inside the circle is six trillion dollars. Six times bigger than the total automobile industry on the planet. That's the race. We are, you in the room, are all in. And these are all competitors of yours. If, if you're one of these arrows, but everyone else in here wants the same piece. They want to be a winner in here. Some of them understand that they wa want to be there. Google, internet company, says the future of the internet is mobile. Apple, a, com a computer manufacturer, changed its na name, is no longer Apple Computer, says we are now a mobile company. BBC said, in the future, all broadcast content, television and radio will be consumed on mobile. Not exclusively on mobile, will be available on, on mobile, etc. So, this is a race with all these industries. Now, there are some interesting lessons we can take from those companies that have seen it the longest. The arrow that has moved the furthest in is the camera industry. Nine out of every ten cameras used today fits my definition of mobile, so not just that cameras are portable, but actually uses the mobile industry. Nine out of ten cameras used on the planet today has a cellular connection on it. And when you go to the camera store here, and you buy yourself a, a Nikon or a, Konica or a Canon, they won't have cellular connections. Obviously, I'm talking about camera phones. Obviously, you know, the Nokias and Samsungs and iPhones and so forth. Nine out of ten cameras used on the planet, 90% migration already, cameras have gone to mobile. So what have we had? In the last ten years, we have seen the golden age of pictures. A magical decade for the photography industry. Previous 150 years, the camera industry grew at a steady rate, roughly doubling the total population of cameras used in the plan on the planet every 10 years. Roughly speaking, every, year, every 10 years, another doubling of the total camera population happened on the planet. For 150 years, steady growth. And then year 2000, camera population grew tenfold. The golden age of photography. At the start of the golden age of photography, the biggest, most powerful camera brands on the planet were Minolta, Konica, uh, Nikon, Canon, Kodak, Polaroid. So how did they fare in the golden age of photography when they had their grand expansion of their industry into every pocket, or no, almost every pocket on the planet? Obviously, the world's biggest camera brand today is, Can is, is uh, Nokia. Minolta? Konica quit the camera business during the golden age of photography. Kodak just went bankrupt. Polaroid band went bankrupt twice. Golden age of photography. Everything inside that circle, every one of the competitors outside that circle, it is an opportunity and it is a threat. For everyone, it is an opportunity and a threat. Let's take a look at a couple of interesting things, what we hear from different players from this industry. From print, not obviously a mobile industry. From print, the Associated Press, Managing Editors Annual Meeting, the biggest newspapers of the whole Associated Press Guild, all the big newspapers in America, etc. 
They said media company, oh, they said the mobile is the future of news, but I think even more interesting is this red part. Media companies lost revenues with the internet, but have a chance to change that with mobile. It's not only that the print media believes the future of news is mobile, cool, fits our circle, but they notice that mobile is different from the internet, where on the internet it's difficult to make money, on mobile it's much easier to make money. There's nothing free, nothing totally easy, but it's much easier to make money on mobile. I put it a different way. I write in my books and on my tweets, mobile is the magical money-making machine. Mobile is the magical money-making machine. I can take print and make money through them through mobile. I can take television, make money for television through mobile. I can take a stationary billboard advertisement and make money on it through mobile. I can take anything outside, oops, outside, sorry, outside this circle, and I can make money for them through mobile. That's why they all want to come in there. So that was what print says. How about the internet? Well. Many people now agree that, that the future of the internet is mobile. That's no news anymore, but this was astonishing news. From RGA in New York, they were talking at the, the global MMA event uh, in New York City, and they noticed they did a little trial with their customer, Tiffany's. Ladies know Tiffany's, the jewelry, jewelry store, jewelry brand. Tiffany sells its jewels online. Their mobile website was not optimized. After the mobile website was optimized, jewelry sales on the mobile website more than doubled, grew by 125%. More than doubled their sale. This means absolutely beyond a shadow of doubt, this proves beyond a shadow of doubt that there are going to be two internets. There cannot be one convergence of the internet if this is possible. Cannot be. It proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that mobile is different. It doesn't move, pr prove that mobile is better, but it proves that mobile is different. And that's been my point all along. Don't copy the internet. Let the internet live. It's a wonderful place, mostly advertising driven, with its funny little things that happen there. Mobile is much more robust and better economically a better place to be. Mobile can make you know, much more money much more easily. But anyway, how about gaming? Did you notice this news just when was it in, in, in March 26? The World uh, Games Olympics, gaming Olympics, where the best video gamers come to compete every year. These are all won by South Koreans, a couple of Singaporeans and Japanese, win, win a few but, but Dutch people, but mostly it's South Koreans who are totally, you know, su supreme in, in the video gaming uh, Olympics. They decided for this year, first time ever, all games to be played shall be only mobile games. The fixed gaming business is so much a dying breed, the Olympics of the video gaming business are going to stop bothering with games on, on you know, that are purely for, for the Xbox or pure, purely for the PC or whatever. All games to be played shall be only mobile games. Angry Birds, everyone? Uh, Rovio Angry Birds is a Finnish company, obviously. So, um, how about credit cards? Did you notice this? Small company nobody heard of called Visa. Visa said last year the future of payments is mobile. They were not talking about contactless payments. They were not talking about plastic cards, credit cards. They were talking about mobile phone payments. The future of money is mobile. When I was next door to your cousins, the Australians, two years ago, talking at the world's biggest uh, money in, uh, industry event, they kicked me out. They actually censored me, not allowing me to speak, trying to say this point when I said the future of money is mobile. They physically censored me. I was registered to speak, I was at the event. Five minutes, I'm mic'd up, and five minutes before I'm supposed to come up, they said, Mr. Honan, you shall not be seated. <laughs> and I was only allowed to sit in the audience and listen to the other. They saw my slides and they said, you're not allowed to speak to this audience and tell the money makers, manufacturers, that their business is going to die. I would have said it's gonna take 20 years. They've got life to retire, not to worry. But they still didn't allow me to speak, speak and, in public and say that. But anyway. It's no longer me that says so. Sweden was the first parliament to start the discussions on when they shall, when, not if, when they shall end the manufacturing of coins and banknotes. First country to issue a target date in November of last year is Turkey. Turkey says year 2025 is our target date when the Turkish coin and banknotes shall not exist anymore in physical form. 
2025, we will all live to see that day. Banknotes have been around for 400 years. Coins have been around for several thousand years. And now we are going to see the end of traditional money. And it will be replaced by mobile. Now the race is between Turkey, Sweden, Kenya, Philippines, South Korea, Japan, I mentioned Sweden, Norway, Estonia, Finland hasn't officially thrown hat in yet, ne Netherlands, a couple of other countries, uh, Somaliland, a couple other African countries. So we are in the race, who will do it first? My guess is it will happen, the first country to eliminate the physical manufacturing of cash will happen before 2025. If Turkey now sets that as the target date, I believe someone will get there before them. Okay, now. A little bit about uh, mobile as the seventh mass media. You know this, this is old stuff, it's, it's in, in, in my book, so you can go to Wikipedia, read the Wikipedia page, it's called seventh mass media. In, chrono in chronological order, the, the seven mass media in order are uh, print, recordings, cinema, radio, television, internet, and mobile. Those of you who have been following my blog or my Twitter, Notice that I just last week announced the eighth mass media, which is augmented reality. So I need to update and evolve this thinking, but these are the seven that currently exist. Augmented reality is currently not a mass media, media uh, platform. It will become a mass media in the next few years. It is available in more kind of prototype forms today. But as a mass media, these seven are the mass media. Why is mobile different? If you have a camera phone, take a picture, or you have your digital camera with you, take a picture of this slide. This is your most valuable slide you will see today. So if you have a camera phone, worth taking the picture now and have it with you. Why is mobile... None of you doing it? Old people in this room, apparently. Young people immediately take their cameras when they understand this is a competitive advantage for me against my peers. I take a picture of this immediately. So anyway, um, mobile has nine unique abilities. Nine things you cannot do on the internet. You cannot do on digital TV or digital radio or DVDs or Playstations. You cannot do on print or cinema or, or traditional analog radio TV. Nine unique benefits. Any one of them can make you money. Any one of them can make you satisfied customers. Any one of them can give you loyalty, satisfaction. Any one of them can be used to evolve your business more. Any one of them can be used for rivals to capture your business. Nine unique abilities of mobile. This is why today Carlos Slim is the richest man on the planet. It used to be Bill Gates, a PC guy. Now it's Carlos Slim, a mobilista. Used to be always the richest people on the planet came from the, nor from the wealthy countries uh, of Europe and North America. And now, first time we have a, uh, a Mexican, someone working from Latin America, who sells his businesses in the emerging world. Richest person on the planet, mobile. This is why Google is in mobile, because mobile has unique abilities. They say so. They use me teaching this to their clients. Anyway, let's take uh, uh, only a look at the latest one, which is the, the, the uh, remote uh, control gives digital access to the real world. In Germany, Lemgo, town near Dortmund, Dortmund uh, and Hanover, uh, 42,000 people town, they decided to do an experiment with saving electricity with uh, using remote control lighting for their street lights. The main lights in the city are lit, main streets are lit during the, the nights, but the side street lights are turned off. When you come home and you need to walk your home street, which is a side street, you send a text message, turn on the light for 15 minutes, and you get home. City saves 50,000 euros per year. So that's what, 70,000 uh, New Zealand uh, per year for a town of 40,000. 40, so what's like a Christchurch is what, 100,000, 200,000? What's What's Christchurch population? Sorry? 400,000, so 10 times this. So you've got uh, 700,000 New Zealand dollar saving for Christchurch. You know, that, that, that kind of level we're looking at just to do little SMS remote control of the streetlights. So uh, the, this is the grand competition. How is the money going here? When we started, 2010, mobile reached $1 trillion in value. As these companies rush into this space during this decade, the race will get more in intense and we will be a $2 trillion industry by 2020. And it will only get more intense into the next decade. I will have retired then. You guys will still be continuing. Then we will be at, at $5 trillion by 2030 before interest. I mean, before, no interest, before... Uh, 
Inflation, thank you, thank you, yes. Recently, we haven't had much inflation. I'm from the 70s, I grew up in the 70s, so I remember bad inflation times. So inflation could do this in, in, in two years if, if we get a heavy dose of inflation on the planet. But this is real, uh, real dollars, inflation-adjusted dollars. Okay, so, so yes, by far the greatest opportunity. You're definitely in the right room, and you're seeking the right uh, place. So what happens, let me show you just one example of how amazing it is inside the circle. What if two industries decide to contest for the same space? Now it gets interesting. Now we get threats and opportunities and, and cannibalization. So how weird is this? Well, remember the camera example. How can you get a telecoms Nokia company competing with pure camera industry through this, this circle? Or how about a computer company called Apple deciding to go into the music business? completely removed from the computer business, but through mobile. So, so that, that the opportunities here are, are uh, very big. What can we do if advertising and banking start to come together? Every one of these arrows has that opportunity. The thicker the arrow, the more you should be looking into it, whether you can steal some of their business or worry that they might come and steal some of your business. So from the advertising side, look at this, Indonesia, McCafe, so McDonald's Cafe, when they did a mobile advertising campaign, they got 18, 18% 18 response rate, which is 100 times better than you get on the internet, and then 16% redemption rate, 1 6. One in six coupons actually delivered on a mobile phone resulted in a sale at McDonald's. There's nothing like this, nothing like this conceivable possible on the internet. 100 times better, sorry, mathematically 90 times better than what you can expect on the internet. How about from the banking side? Check out these numbers from Kenya. Today, five years ago, it was four years ago when I did the slide. So, so today it's five years from when M-Pesa launched. But yes, last year, 30% of Kenya GDP, total Kenya economy, already almost one third, transits a mobile phone. You get your salary on your mobile phone, you pay your taxes on your mobile phone, you pay your mortgage on your mobile phone, you pay your car payment on your mobile phone, your children's education on your mobile phone. Of course, you pay your groceries on your mobile phone, you pay your petrol on your mobile phone. One third of the total economy is now going through a mobile phone. And this happened in four years. And just keeps growing, growing, growing. Whenever you look at M-Pesa numbers, they're always bigger. Now, what happens when you merge the two? Now gets the really astonishing part, South Korea. So this is Tesco's affiliate, Home Plus. They decided to create virtual stores inside the subway stations in Seoul. This is a train station, subway station. You see the guy here is walking into the train. Here's the door to the subway train. The doors open. Here are, you would normally see the windows of seeing the subway train coming in and out in the tunnel. But instead of the windows, they put floor-to-ceiling posters with pictures of groceries, life-size pictures. So there's some orange juice. There's some... Oops! Oops! I should be looking where I'm walking. Okay, always experiences. Anyway, so, so, um, uh, so, so we see life-size pictures of what, what you're going to buy. Now let me show you a close-up what he's doing. So he sees that I want to buy two items of orange juice. There's a QR code, he takes a smartphone, clicks on it, and it's, it's purchased. He has his payment already on his phone, his wallet is on the phone. Click to be paid. It's delivered to his home before he gets home on this train. How successful? Look at the red part. Not increased 30%, more than doubled sale for, for Home Plus. Increased sales by 130%. 130% better when you start merging these two. This is the obvious future. This is the obvious future. And that's why, oops, oh, and then what happens in the stores? Comscore measured American uh, retail consumers. Half of them have already changed their mind inside a store based on what they found on the phone. That's totally same. New Zealand penetration, smartphone, same as America. So this smartphone user, soon all those will be 100% of your consumers. Half of them already have changed their mind while in the store. Soon it'll be totally stupid to be in the store without having your phone constantly doing a little checking. Check these, you know, can I find this cheaper somewhere? Is there a better product somewhere? Did this get good reviews? Ask your friend, should I buy it? Should, what price should I ask? And so forth. So that's where Jonathan says, advertising plus money equals advo currency. 
Not adverb currency, but advo currency. Why the O for advocacy? Advertising plus money will become a new type of merged product, something in the middle of the circle called advo currency. Read Jonathan's uh, writings, his books, and so forth. You will understand more as, as this starts to evolve in this direction. So, as always, I want to end with thoughts about magic. When you do cool stuff in mobile, please try to make them magical. Imagine being on a diet. If you had to enter everything you were eating today, oh, I'm going to have the Salisbury steak, and I'll have some fries, and I'll have some red wine, and how, you know, unless you're a teenager, your thumb's really going to ache. In Japan, they have the calorie phone. Camera phone, which recognizes every dish that is available commonly in Japan, just by one picture, it calculates the right amount of calories for you. This is the future. This is magical. This is wonderful. These are the kind of things that we need to do.